From the Museum of Tolerance Theater in Los Angeles, Decision 2003, Campaign for California, the contenders and the issues in the California gubernatorial recall election. With your moderator, Paul Lloyd of NBC4 Los Angeles. Broadcasting live from West Los Angeles, welcome to Decision 2003, the Campaign for California a gubernatorial debate. Good evening, everybody. I'm Paul Moyer. I'll be your moderator for tonight's debate, which is presented by KNBC Channel 4 in conjunction with Telemundo in association with the California League of Women Voters Education Fund, the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, and cable station LA 36. We have never done anything like this before in the state of California. What a campaign this has been. In this campaign, there is one thing that is certain, and that is uncertainty. And that should make for a very interesting evening tonight informative from our three candidates who are gathered here with us and also with us tonight is what i believe and i trust will be a very well-behaved audience of 350 people who have gathered here in the museum of tolerance having said that let me introduce to you now our three candidates our three replacement candidates one of the uh, the top three in the race they are from uh, uh, my right to left lieutenant governor cruz bustamante the democrat Investment Counselor Peter Camejo of the Green Party. And Republican State Senator Tom McClintock. We invited Arnold Schwarzenegger to be here tonight, and I believe he has other things to do. However, should he walk through that door in the next 50 minutes, we'll find him a chair. Let me introduce you our journalist now, Matea Gold from the LA Times. Esther Sena Gomez from Telemundo. And Frank Motek from KNX News Radio. Mr. Camejo. All over California, budgets of education are now being cut. Why? California is having the highest gross domestic product ever this year. The facts are that we're number one in the nation, but we're 27th in education. Why? Because the richest 1% who have more income than 75% of our people, millionaires, we tax them at the lowest rate. We must have a fair tax where you pay so much more than them, they should pay the same as you. And if they did, that would be the starting point to solving our problems. We cannot solve this fiscal crisis. We cannot begin to develop affordable housing, renewable energy, solving the infrastructure questions until we're willing to have a fair tax. All right, in thank California. you, sir. Mr. McClintock. Do you want to speak to this? One of the amazing parts of the revelations today is that these women all feared defending themselves by going for public health the fear they would be victimized instead of defended by society. I think that tells you the depth of the problem that we still have to give women full rights. And I think it's unacceptable to have a governor. Look, these six are the ones who step forward. How many others will step forward? This cannot be a, uh, only six when you have this pattern. And I think it's a shame for California to have a person like this as our governor. All right. Mr. Camejo, rebuttal. No one in California, no one is saying that we should round up three million people and throw them out of California. Everyone says they are essential for our economy. They're part of our community now. The question is, is California one of the most advanced economies in the, in the world, one of the most cultured and educated people? We're going to have an apartheid system where part of our workers do not have the same laws as others. They can't even have a driver's license to take their children to school and work. We've got to end this. Mr. McClintock. Well, legally, all the countries of the world, all advanced industrial countries have rejected the death penalty. It's only America that has it. And every country around the world that has seen in America 15 innocent people on death row that were discovered, how many have been murdered, they say to the United States, you want us to turn these people over? Assure us. They, that you will not practice death on them because they fear that our whole judicial system is not working and they have every right to have their opinion. I don't agree with keeping murderers and not bringing them back, but we must end the death penalty right. in America. 
Assistant Senator Gomez with a question for Peter Camejo. Mr. Camejo, a $38 billion deficit is very difficult to overcome. Where do you see California in a year or two from now, under your watch? Well, first, we don't have a $38 billion deficit. We have a budget gap over two years. Uh, this has been very misleading, the way we have talked to the public. We do have a very large deficit. After the five best years ever in the history of California, the most income that ever came in, there is no way that you can have uh, Gray Davis maintaining the posture, I didn't do it, you know, like Bart Simpson. This, he did it. This whole team is responsible for this, but there's a simple solution. On top of getting rid of the waste and, and, the, and the corporate loopholes, let's create a fair tax. On our website, votecameo.org, we lay it all out. We would have a $19 billion surplus if we just increased the taxes among the wealthiest people who make over two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars a year to levels that still are below where the poorest people of California are and less than what they were paying two years ago if you look at their whole tax because of the federal tax cut and we could solve this deficit tomorrow. Mr. McClintock? Well, in the... Uh... All right, Matea Gold from the LA Times. Question for Peter Camejo. Mr. Camejo, you have touted your intention to create a universal health care system if elected governor. How would you pay for such a program and pass it through the state legislature? Well, the, in, in the United States, on average, we pay $6,000 per person for health care. Most European countries are paying half of that and providing more health care. The fact is, a study that was done recently in California showed California would save $7.3 billion, $4 billion actually out of our budget, if we switch to universal health care and single-payer system. And, and, and this issue is so fundamental. We remain the only country of all advanced industrial countries that does not have universal health care. We have to get the insurance business out of the health care business and get it back to what it's supposed to be, the government working with the people and the doctors and the medical profession to provide health care for all. We need universal health care. We need to move in that direction. America must stop being alone. California should help show the way forward. Tom, what's up? Uh, Peter, I don't know how you're going to do that. No, but go no, ahead. I, I want to add one thing here. Once again, you know, I think every question here I'm answering, the United States is alone. Once again, every other country of the world has solved this except the United States and, and maybe one or two other countries that you can't have many candidates running because we don't have runoffs. We don't have a system through which people can feel free to vote. Tom McClintock, Senator McClintock, has every right to run and present his point of view. He, he's getting this pressure. Hey, we Greens get it every single time. Like, you know, we're committing some crime because we run and present our platform. What we need to change is the electoral system that blocks people from running. Tom, you're in the state, correct? I want to I want to urge students all over California to look up Metcha and to join it and participate in it. It's a great group. Uh, I want to congratulate Cruz Bustamante for having been a member of Metcha. This, this whole charge is unbelievably absurd. It is so exaggerated, it's so misrepresented, it, and it's so unfair to Cruz Bustamante to throw this type of stuff. This is not what elections are about. Digging something up, somebody said somewhere. So it's obvious that what Mitch is really about is not what this statement was made. Uh, well, first Mr. Mayo. Well, yeah, well, you know, Cruz, when I ran for office uh, on campus during the Vietnam period, I was then expelled for having spoken with an unauthorized microphone. Uh, that's how we were being treated. A lot of people were saying a lot of radical stuff. And I think this is absurd. Bustamante or myself or Tom, nobody believes that our society should not be diverse and include everybody. All right. Matea Gold. Peter Camille. Well, I do think there is waste in the budget. Uh, we all remember the Oracle deal where uh, Governor Davis gave $94 million to a company for something that was completely unneeded. I've called for an audit to find out exactly what's happening there. But, you know, when Tom McClintock mentions let's not raise taxes, part of the way it's done is they raise your fees. It's like right now students have to pay more to go to school in the universities, and that's really a transfer of wealth. They're paying the taxes for the rich people we won't tax. So now the average person has to pay more taxes through fees. Cruz? Uh, 
I agree with Cruz Pusamante. We must put all the money back. In fact, I believe we should increase money for education. We need to help teachers. They are the frontline fighters on this. I agree with the ACLU suit, which has said that there's rats in the classes, there's roofs that leak. And what did Governor Davis do? He hired $350 NARA lawyers to depose 11-year-olds instead of dealing with the issue. The issue is here that California was once the envy of the whole nation for our education. We've let it fall apart. We have to put it back because where it's going is to try to introduce the idea of privatization, which I totally oppose. Frank Mochek for Peter Camejo. Mr. Camejo, unemployment lines here in California are longer than the national average. And let me ask you the so-called uh, Peter Uberoth question. What is your best idea to bring jobs to California and reverse the exodus of jobs we are seeing here in California right now? We, we have 1.1 million unemployed. And I think with my fair tax proposal uh, and the surplus we would have, we could start a program for affordable housing, which we desperately need, which would create employment. We could begin the switch to renewable energy so we could become the first. And that is a very labor intensive as opposed to the type of plants that we're now building. I do believe that we should look at this issue and begin making efforts. The government's job is to take the responsibility to try to create jobs for everyone. While we're hitting record GDPs, how can we allow 1.1 million of our citizens to remain without work to be able to provide for themselves and their families? This is a, a challenge for us. And that's why I say a fair tax and let's start the programs to stimulate our economy by providing jobs, creating programs that will create jobs for all. Mr. Lieutenant Governor. If you look at the history of recessions in California, you'll see. Correct? Peter Camayo. Look, I think we need to get the facts straight. California is below average of all states in its taxes. 36 in the nation in property taxes. Our corporate taxes have gone from 9.6% down to 5.6% over the last 16 years, the lowest it's been in half a century. The fact is that the poor and the middle class in California are paying much too high taxes. I call for lowering the taxes on 60 percent, but the wealthiest people and the corporations are not paying their fair share. I don't like the, the way that the direction of this bill. I want the taxes to become fair and do be done appropriately. Mr. Buscemati, would you sign 1690? Well, I think people who drive Hummers are, are clueless, but they have enough money to advertise it. Uh, the, the environment is the economy. And if we begin to let our guard down, not even let our guard down, we are in a crisis. We live in denial. We need the exact opposite. We need a major campaign to save not only our last remaining 4% of our ancient forests, but to stop the global warming and the fact that we're destroying our ecology throughout the world. To talk about abolishing the EPA instead of strengthening it does put a big question mark over this candidate. All right, uh, we'll uh, reverse it. Mr. Camayo, a question for Mr. Bustamante. First of all, Mr. Bustamante, I want to thank you for having taken the position that I should be included in this debate and that we should be allowed to have another point of view. I also want to thank Tom, but I want to especially thank Cruz because you normally don't expect the Democrats to say that about the Greens. There's five senators now who are proposing that we change our electoral system so that people can vote their first and second choice, instant runoff voting. In this case, a lot of people may want to vote for me for first choice, Bustamante for second choice. If I don't get as many votes as Bustamante, all my votes, all the people who voted for me, their vote would go to Bustamante. Would you support such a system? You and I have had a chance to... All right, Mr. McClintock, a question for Peter Camejo. One question I've, I've often had of the, uh, of the Green Party, and I'd, I'd be interested in your thoughts. Um, we all agree that, that, that uh, hydrogen is ultimately the, uh, the, the future of uh, energy in this nation. Uh, it provides a, a pollution-free alternative to both the internal combustion as, as well as to um, provide us hydrogen fuel cells for uh, electricity. But in order to do that, we've got to have cheap electricity to produce that cheap hydrogen. The cheapest and cleanest ways of doing that are hydroelectric and nuclear. Hydroelectric at half a cent a kilowatt hour, nuclear at three cents a kilowatt hour, compared to 27 cents for uh, solar power, for example. Why do you folks oppose uh, a renewed commitment to hydroelectricity and nuclear energy? Well, let me, let me start by saying that um, the answer to nuclear is very simple. No one in the insurance industry will insure it. 
There's a reason when they won't insure something. It's because we don't know the incredible risk that we are taking. We do not have any way to take the spent rods and put them away in a safe way. That is, it's not that we reject the technology per se. We reject the reality that it's unsafe. It is absolutely true that in the end we have to go to hydrogen. It is the answer. We know the technology, but we haven't had the will to pour the necessary funding into the development. And the way we're going to produce the hydrogen is with solar energy out in the middle of Arizona. In fact, if you read a book like Natural Capitalism, if everybody had a hydrogen car and plugged it in at night, it would produce three times the electricity we use in the United States. That's how close we are. It's only a matter of 15, 20 years if we would really work on it and make a commitment. And as governor, I would turn California to become the leader in this march, which we need for all of humanity now. Cruz, a question for... Uh Cruz, a question for Tom McClintock, please. Or a question for Mr. McClintock. Yes, uh, Senator McClintock, in another debate, uh, you came out and said you wanted those energy contracts ripped up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I supported you immediately on that. I agree with you. But you criticized Governor Davis, and I have, you know, 100% uh, here the Green Party and, and, and the Republicans. This is rare. Total agreement here. But you don't talk about the scam that the companies were doing. Uh, the, how they manipulated things, how I, I think the law was violated repeatedly, the way they manipulated the price of natural gas. What would you do as governor to stop those corporations from being able to raid us? Uh, open up production. The, the reason they were able to play those games is because they were dealing in what is called a seller's market, a condition of shortage. Uh, when something is scarce, it is expensive. When it's plentiful, it is cheap. Uh, we produce more electricity, those games cannot take place. Uh, uh, so, uh, but let me also say on the contracts, when Gray Davis panicked and stepped in, subsidized a price spike, and then locked us into contracts based on that abnormally high price spike, uh, he did so with a clear conflict of interest with his chief negotiator. His chief negotiator was receiving $200,000 a year in undisclosed income from Edison International. At the same time, he was uh, negotiating contracts on behalf of the people, the express purpose of which was to keep Edison subsidiary out of bankruptcy. Under state law, those conditions void those contracts. The governor will not stipulate to that because it requires him to admit wrongdoing. I have filed suit in Superior Court in Pasadena to see that those contracts are voided. I will sign that stipulation as governor, and we will void those contracts. And uh, Tom McClintock, a final question for Cruz Bustamante. Yes, it's a question I actually asked in, in another debate and didn't get an answer, and I'm hoping he's had time to think about it. Uh, Cruz, you uh, have, have uh, proposed $8 billion of new tax increases. Um, every billion dollars we talk about at the state level is about $115 for an average family. So that's a pretty big burden. It's, it's commensurate with what uh, uh, Pete Wilson raised taxes by in 1991. Those tax increases broke the back of the economy. They turned a recession into a near depression, and they actually produced less total revenue after the tax increases went into effect than we had been receiving before. What makes you think you're going to have any more luck uh, than uh, Pete Wilson had uh, once you raise taxes eight? Peter Camejo, your closing statement. In this debate, I've talked a lot about the ecological system, how it's in decline. But I want people to understand that the ecology and the environment are really one and the same thing. And we're living in denial on this. The platform that we're raising, the Green Party, is an overall conception that would transform us, to move us to a democracy, to create social justice. Like, we're for a living wage. We are now paying 24 percent less than we were in 1968, adjusted for inflation, on the minimum wage. We want a fair tax. All of this is so that we can begin to solve certain problems. We need to empower women. You want to slow down the growth of population? Empower women. Living wage, affordable housing. Take the steps to create fairness and democracy. We need peace in the world. We cannot have a situation where we supported Osama bin Laden for years and Saddam Hussein, that we violate the UN Charter and invade Iraq. We need peace in the world to protect and save our planet. We need to have democracy at home. We need to improve it. We need to have a fair tax in California. Make California once again a leader. Vote Green. Vote Cameo Governor. And, gentlemen, thank you. I know you've all been down a long road, you three, and we really appreciate you uh, coming to our debate today. Thank you very much for our candidates. Our journalists kind of disappeared. I'm sorry about that, but we had to go to that other part of the program. Thank you all for being here. 
Audience, thank you. Thank you. You were great. The election is October the 7th, next Tuesday. It is a defining moment in the history of the state of California. Be a part of it. Go out there and vote. Thank you for watching, everybody, and good night.